I'm in Breton, which is home to one of the black settlements in Alberta, to find out more about the migration story that brought African Americans to Canada. This particular quarter section was the homestead of Sam Hooks. And this is Sam Hooks and his wife Neoma. I think when we think about you know February Black History Month here in Canada, if we ask this person on the street, how do you know about black history in Canada? They probably think about the Underground Railroad in Ontario, comes to mind probably first. Probably the United Empire Loyalists and coming into Nova Scotia after the American Revolution to some degree. And then there's ours. And it wasn't a huge number, like 1,000 to 1,500 people. The largest group of immigrants into Canada, Western Canada in that kind of time frame, were Americans. There's about 750,000 came to Canada. And out of that 750,000, 1,000 to 1,500 were African Americans. But the stir that it caused in political circles and just the general population was, as I, I think is what I find interesting is what, what were they meeting? It wasn't um, the true North, strong and free, that they, they met here in lots of cases. They, they met challenges uh, because of the color of their skin. Those challenges included petitions in Edmonton to keep land for whites only and an order in council to bar blacks from Canada for a period of one year. But that was quickly retracted. There was not much settlement here at the time so they could get land in, in proximity to each other so they could kind of create their own community. Uh, they were remote so they were getting removed from some of the tensions that were going on in the urban centers because there was a, they would come to Edmonton uh, you know, stay there for a while, maybe work at jobs there. There was tension in the urban centers. They tended to get out where there was not a lot of other people. They moved to Keystone, which is now called Breton, and made their own church, one-room school, post office, and cemetery. Keystone Cemetery, the lady's picture down here is Drusilla Briscoe. She is a mother-in-law to George Nicholas and she is supposed to be the first one to have been interned at the Keystone Cemetery. She died you know, shortly after coming to Canada. The cemetery has, well, we're not sure how many. For sh There's about 25 or so names listed on. There's a big bronze plaque there that now it's been restored. Uh, there are very few headstones. Um, so we were relying on oral history and you know, the family's memory of who was interned there over the years. So it's an inactive cemetery now. It's, it's maintained by the museum. You know, the grass is cut and stuff, but it's kind of just a solemn testament to their, to their life and community here. 